Okay, so I did experiments 18 and 19 together because they are very similar. So 18 was disinfectants and antiseptics, and then experiment 19 was antimicrobial sensitivity testing. So they're very similar because um, what we're going to be doing is seeing how certain chemicals affect the growth of microorganisms. And so in experiment 18, we test household cleaning agents. Those were the chemicals. And then with experiment 19, we tested antibiotics. So the experiments is that, <clears throat> so with these experiments, you'll have to know the very tech, very different um, vocab based off their technicalities though. So it'll say something like what a micro, what a, what a cytal agent is, and then it'll say what a static agent, and they're going to sound very similar, but they have technical differences. So you'll have to go through each one of those vocab and then learn the differences between all the different types of disinfectants and then antiseptics and all that jazz. Um, but the major term that you want to look at is this zone of inhibition, and that's the effective thing that we need to look at today. So what we did in the experiments, both of them, is that we made a lawn of bacteria with a gram negative and a gram positive, and then we placed six agents on it. So in experiment 18, we used six different cleaning agents like Lysol and Listerine and that kind of stuff. And then we saw the growth effects based off of the ability to kill thing, like the, the cleaning agent's ability to kill bacteria. And then in experiment 19, we actually used antibiotics uh, and, the, and the ability to kill there. So what happens is that if you, if the, if the little dot that is the chemical kills it, then you'll see this very clear, what's called zone of inhibition, where you can see that there's no growth of the bacteria involved. Where here, there is growth because that zone of inhibition didn't really do, or that chemical didn't really do anything, so there is no zone of inhibition. The only difference is that with experiment 19, we actually measured the zone um, of inhibition and compared it to uh, the sensitive diameter. And what that means is that we said that if bacteria didn't grow in this diameter, then it probably, if it, if it grew over that, then it did kill the bacteria actually. But if it didn't, then, um, then it didn't actually, it's not really that effective. And what that goes off of is certain statistical measures and all that. So um, you just gotta know that if it lies within a certain range, then it did kill it, and if it went, or if it went beyond that, that it did kill it. If it went under that, then, um, then it didn't probably. So, what this allows us to do is that when people get sick, this is a kind of a, w a way that doctors can actually test to see what antibiotic to use. So here is like a a plate very similar to what we did in lab that shows like what by what antibiotics to use and what not to use. So. If, you wouldn't use something like this because none of the bacteria were killed. But you could use something like this because it has a very large zone of inhibition. So you, what doctors do is they can kind of, or one way, it might be antiquated at this point, but one way it might be to go in and actually just look at something like this and then say, oh, let's use this antibiotic, and then you'll give it to them, and you can actually cure their sickness that is being caused. Um, so that's fun. Very interesting lab. Um, but that's 18 and 19.